welcome, welcome. So um, Principal Ryan Vance, um, he left some words for us to welcome us into the house. He's on the way here. And so I want you to just imagine myself as, if you know Brian Vance, does anyone know Brian? Just imagine, I'm Brian. I'm the principal of West Seattle, and I am just going to speak as if I am Brian right now. Are you ready for that? Okay. Use your imagination. All right. Thank you for coming out to West Seattle High School tonight for our State of the District event. I am Brian Vance. <laughs> Proud principal of West Seattle High School. Coming in tonight, you were asked to write down what you love about Seattle Public Schools. Many of you commented about specific teachers, principals, classes, programs, the arts, music, and athletics. One of the themes for tonight is Together We Are Better. This falls right into what I love most about Seattle Public Schools. Our commitment to supporting our community and our passion for making a positive difference in the lives of every student. At West Seattle High School, this looks like our Link Crew program, where our upper class students support our incoming ninth graders. It looks like over 120 students showing up on a Saturday morning to get extra tutorial help, to work on a project together, or to make up a test. It looks like our representatives of Student Senate identifying areas they want to see improvements and working together with staff to make that happen. It looks like our partnership with Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Puget Sound and providing mentors for ninth and 10th grade students. And it looks like our partnership with City of Seattle as part of their families and education levy. Tonight, you get a chance to hear about some of the other wonderful things happening across our entire district. I am so proud and honored to be part of Seattle Public Schools and our Seattle community. So let's sit back, relax, and enjoy the evening. Go Wildcats! Woo! <laughs> Keisha now. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> I also want to thank the String Jazz Ensemble for the incredible opening. They are from my alma mater, Garfield High School. Now, no disrespect to the Wildcats, but any dogs in the house? <laughs> All right, got some barks out there. Thank you. Okay, a special, get, uh, special thanks to our West Seattle High School students who are supporting us tonight. They were at the rehearsal earlier today. We have three talented students who are running the sound and the lights and the photography students who are taking photos in the reception. Thank you so much, West Seattle students. Just like Principal Vance, I too love Seattle Public Schools and am a proud member of its central office leadership team. As a former SPS K-12 student, educator, and former school leader, I've spent about 32 years of my life influenced by the amazing teachers, the school leaders, students, families, and partners of SPS. I have firsthand knowledge, even as a parent, about their passion and commitment for excellence. I want to extend a warm welcome to the many parents, community partners, and staff that are here in attendance this evening. Give yourselves a hand. We appreciate you coming out on this blustery Tuesday night. So tonight, we'll hear from students, their challenges, hopes, and aspirations. We'll also hear about the progress we're making as a district and our continued commitment to ensuring each and every student thrives in Seattle Public Schools. Tonight's theme is Better Together. So throughout the program, you'll be asked to consider how we can all partner better together on behalf of student success. To center this evening's conversation, I would like to introduce Lashana C. O'Kane to the stage. Lashana C. is a student at Chief Self International Baccalaureate High School, a poet, a novelist, a musician, born and raised in Seattle, also known as Leo and currently working on a hip hop and R&B release. She spends her spare time advocating for bringing change through the performing arts Seattle Public Schools and the current stipulations of Seattle itself. Let's all welcome Lashana C. O'Kane. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I am Lashana C. O'Kane, and I will be reading a poem 
um, sharing something with you guys that I've written called Let's Be Realistic. This recycle system is very much times not mentioned. You see, I have realized there's a habit here with being asked questions that I do not know the answer to. Being tested and quizzed on things that I have never heard of nor that I will ever use in my entire life, they say, be realistic. But realistic is not this, is not what I learned, is not what I'm taught, is not who I'm educated to be. So please, if anything, just do what you can because you know it will help me, not bore me. Realistic. I'll be realistic. Isn't it realistic that we forget that our scholars have been focused and aligned and relentless and we need this system to be more focused and aligned and relentless on us being more focused and aligned and relentless? Yes. Being told that it is legal to send me to court when life happens to get in the way too many times is the reason for why I believe the governmental system is in alliance with the great system, is the reason for why I am always absent accordingly. Okay. LaShawna C. O'Kane is the reason for why I stopped caring about grades long ago. Because I get tired about predicting and predicting the worry that I will have for not predicting early enough in the first place because I am fighting for something that I know the school system will not give to me. This freedom that cannot be predicted. Be realistic. Realistic is admitting that I cannot predict my panic attacks or flu symptoms, or being exposed on social media, I cannot call in 48 hours before my period hits or before my bus is late. Because you just happen to want every reason for why I'm not here today, this recycle system is very much times not mentioned. And I swear the school system must hate me because I am seeing patterns in these teachers that complain of working so hard but that are not seeing the children work harder because I am seeing patterns of us brown kids continuing to hate these buildings more. I should not be taught as if I am not worthy of the eight letter word, graduate. I should not be held to expectations that you tell me I should reach for but not expect for me to grab hold of. I should be a scholar of my own honor. It should not be made harder for me than it would be for anybody else, but it is, they say, be realistic. So the state of this district is a state of competition, of who can make it to the bottom first, of who can shove the most teenagers in a prison cell before they graduate first, the fifth largest gap in the nation between white and black children we are. This is not the equality we fought for. This is not the access that I was promised. The system has been playing tic-tac-toe with a million minds and Russian roulette with stuttering hearts. And just how do I win this game, I've been asking myself. Praying to God for a cheat because I was taught that I was to only ever cheat. It's a habit that I wish I did not have, that I picked up on false occasion. Cheating is the only thing we are taught to not have a way out of. We are subconsciously taught the cheat of the white man, but not of the power or of the privilege taught how to feel good in that skin even if we've never walked in those shoes or been taught how to control them. They say, I only talk about the bad things, but it's because I haven't been given hope for a better tomorrow, but wanting, but waiting to be given something gives the impression that I can't fight for it myself. The state of this district is weighing, and realistically, the state of this district shows me that we barely have a state at all because we twist and shift ourselves, shifting out of focus until we are not in the frame anymore and you take the picture. Fighting against each other when we are much better together, I will let myself be a part of this moment, of this figure, of this treasure, of my success, of this genius. I will make this system better if it means the death of me, I mean it. I will speak until there are no words left. You will hear me until you go deaf and so I say, I will no longer be given the permission to graduate. I will no longer be given the voice, but an off microphone. We need more time. We should have less aggression. We should have more love. We should have more support. We should have more understanding. As teachers, I'm suggesting that you only want to teach. And as a scholar, I've only always wanted to learn. The state of this district 
is hanging from our fingertips. But we can change it together. And that's me being realistic. Thank you so much. Thank you, LaShaughnessy. Your words were so powerful. Let's give her one more round of applause. <laughs> Throughout this evening's program, I'm going to ask you to take a learning stance. I'm going to ask you to lean in. Now, anyone that knows me knows that I was a middle school teacher and a middle school principal, and I'm, I feel like a middle schooler at heart all the time. And so leaning in for me is physically, and it's also in my mind. So I'm going to ask you to practice with me a moment, OK? So loosen up your shoulders. Come on, loosen up. You guys ready? All right, show me how to lean in. You got to come in like this. You got it? You shake a little bit, come back out. Come on, one more time. Lean in. All right. So I'm going to ask you, when I say lean in, what are we going to do? Come on, show me. All right. Yes. All right. That's the business. All right. So this learner stance of leaning in is something that Dr. Nyland has asked of all SPS educators and all of our partners. So what do we hear? What was one thing that LaShaughnessy said that resonated with you? As we consider how to make our education system work for all students, what do we need to focus on? So let's just take 30 seconds and turn and talk to a neighbor and share one idea or thought that came to mind from LaShaughnessy's words. All right, welcome back. So now I want you to keep that idea in your mind as we go through the program t this evening. At the end of tonight's program, you'll be asked to make a personal commitment, one commitment to work better on behalf of students. I would now like to introduce Dr. Larry Nyland. Dr. Nyland has dedicated his life to public service and education and has been a consistent champion for justice. Under his leadership, Seattle Public Schools has seen increased graduation rates, narrowing of opportunity and achievement gaps, and renewed relationships with our labor partners and educator core. Show me how you're leaning in. Come on, you all, lean in. Shake it. All right. Show me how you're leaning in. Let's send Dr. Um, Nylon our energy. It's my great pleasure to introduce my friend, mentor, and the superintendent of Seattle Public Schools, Dr. Larry Nylon. Thank you, Keisha, and thank you, LaShaughnessy, for being real and authentic and bringing student voice uh, to us uh, with a sobering message about the work that we uh, are undertaking and the work that we have ahead. Student story, strength, and need are an important part of what we do in Seattle Public Schools, and we're continuing to learn uh, from our students uh, and from our schools and from our community about how we can lean in and make a difference for each and every one of our 54,000 students. As I uh, begin tonight, I'll uh, take a, a note of personal privilege and say how pleased I am to be at West Seattle High School. My mother graduated here a few years back, uh, many, many years, so it's uh, uh, fascinating to walk halls where uh, my uh, mother graduated and I can, I guess Lincoln will be rebuilt soon where my father graduated and Roosevelt where I graduated is kind of, I can walk those halls but they're all uh, really, really refurbished. Um, the other thing I want to do tonight is I want to start by recognizing our uh, board of directors and so if uh, your board of directors currently soon to be retired or newly elected, uh, please stand and let us recognize you. We have with us tonight uh, President Sue Peters, Vice President Leslie Harris, uh, Betty Patu, Stefan Blanford, Scott Pinkham, Eden Mack, newly elected, and Zach DeWolf, uh, newly elected. So uh, thank you. The work that school board members do is incredible. Uh, kind of by my math, I figured that they put in about 20 hours a week uh, for a part-time, mostly unpaid job for uh, board meetings, committee meetings, policy review, constituency uh, meetings, and a lot 
more. So thank you to our uh, directors. I would like to uh, honor our two retiring uh, board members. So I would invite uh, President Sue Peters and Dr. Stefan uh, Blanford to come up. We have uh, a remembrance uh, for you. And uh, so if you'd come to the stage. I'll start with uh, President Peters. Thank you for your uh, guidance as president this last year in terms of uh, bringing seven uh, different perspectives together and uh, build it, building a common framework going forward. Thank you for your attention to factual-based decision-making and community engagement. And we have uh, for you something that will commemorate uh, a very, very small token of four years of hard work. So thank you very much. And Dr. Uh, Stefan Blanford has been uh, an advocate for uh, equity, an advocate for research, an advocate for effectiveness, and uh, one of the sayings that will go down in the annals of our memories anyway is exactly what problem are we trying to solve? <laughs> Thank you for your service. All right, as a longtime educator, we'll see if I can make the technology work and uh, keep my place in the program. Uh, better together, uh, truly we are uh, better when we work together, and uh, glad to talk about uh, the district and our progress in this last year. We are a growing district. Uh, we're at 54,000 students, uh, depending on how we count them. Uh, more than that, when we count all of the preschool students and uh, students that are with us part-time. We've grown 8,000 students over the last 10 years, and uh, we're building rapidly to keep uh, pace with that growth. We're a very diverse district. Uh, students represent uh, come to us from 150 nations and more than 150 languages. We represent a changing city. <clears throat> last year, we served uh, 4,200 students that were categorized as homeless. And at the same time, we're gentrifying. So uh, we have uh, more wealthy families, and we have more families uh, that uh, are homeless and need more support. We're also the 20th largest employer in the state of Washington. Uh, we're a billion dollar business between what we do on a day-to-day -day basis for our students and the construction that we do. Uh, and we've got somewhere between six and 8,000 employees, whether you count the full-time equivalents or the number of people who come to work for us each day. And uh, as an old history teacher, I'm fascinated by the fact that 150 years ago this year, uh, Seattle Public Schools School Board, three board members at that point in time, uh, told the University of Washington that we, the Seattle Public Schools, were ready to take over our responsibility for facilities. Up until that time, uh, there was about 20 uh, K-12 students, and that contributed to about 21 students at the University of Washington. So at that time, the University of Washington, for the first six years of their existence, uh, counted all of our kids from uh, K through university. And in 1867, uh, the school board said, We'll take over responsibility for buildings, and uh, they took over one of the buildings in the one of the classrooms in the county, and served 23 students. So, for 150 years, our school board has been working hard to figure out how we provide facilities for all of our students. Our mission is um, ensuring equitable access, closing opportunity gaps, and providing excellence in education for each and every one of our students. And our roadmap is our strategic plan. Goal number one is excellence and equity. Goal number two is improved systems. Goal number three is strengthening school, family, and community engagement. And as we go through uh, tonight, uh, I'll be talking about a report on each of those goals. 
I want to thank uh, the school board for their uh, focus on each of these goals. Uh, actually, I have two degrees in map making, so this isn't exactly a map, but I love uh, illustrations. So uh, th three and a half years ago when I came to the district, we had 13 goals, and they were uh, loosely connected to our strategic plan. Kind of the middle arrow, uh, the last two years we've had nine and seven goals, and they've been more and more aligned to the strategic plan. And the last arrow, uh, for the fourth year in a row, the school board has doubled down on three of our top goals, excellence, equity, and engagement, and they put funding uh, behind those goals. And that means that, as the arrow up there shows, we are aligned, and we're moving ahead, and we're moving uh, together with each other. And as it says up there, better together. And uh, having worked uh, as a consultant in the district 20 years ago under John Stanford, I, I'm exceedingly pleased to be a part of the district and to see the district make this kind of uh, progress and to see the city of Seattle uh, through the mayor's summit uh, come together and focus on the EOG work along with us, to see our community-based partners join with us, to have SEA, our educator family, and our principals join with us. There's just a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm around how do we do this work together. I thought we had, I don't know about arrived, but we, this is where I wanted to go. And uh, in the last few months I've realized, hmm, there's one more stage, at least, maybe there's another one after that, but there's at least one more stage in terms of how do we truly come together uh, and have one set of language, one set of uh, commitments, one set of beliefs. So uh, that's kind of our uh, challenge as we work together internally with educators and as we work uh, with the city of Seattle and as we work with our community-based uh, partners. So what's our progress been? So starting, where did I go? There we go. Goal one, uh, excellence and equity. Seattle Public Schools is a high-performing urban district. We outperform our national peers, school districts that look like us demographically, by nearly one full uh, grade level. We outperform the state by, uh, this chart shows, by 10 points in third grade reading and by 15 points in eighth grade math, and that's representative across the board from third grade to eighth grade in reading and math. And that gap, uh, is, in this case it's a good gap, we're outperforming the state by more each year. 71% of our graduates uh, go on to some form of post-secondary education, which is huge for them and for our community because about 70% of our new jobs, family wage jobs, require some college. Maybe not a full four years, but some college. Part of the goal, goal one up here is our equity goal and our elimination of the opportunity gap. Thanks to the work by our high school uh, schools, uh, that gap is narrowing. So you can see the top line is uh, white graduations. They've continued to go up over the last four years. The bottom line is African-American graduates, and they've gone up 12% uh, over the last uh, four years. And you can see that the gap is beginning to narrow. So we still have work to do, uh, but we've got uh, a lot of good work that's been done in schools, and we're moving in the right direction. Two years ago, the school board set a moratorium in place for student suspensions at the elementary level, and they put funding behind it uh, to provide for positive alternatives to suspension. And as a result of that, uh, there's been a trend line that's also positive in reducing the number of students that have been suspended. This chart shows that in the last year, the number of African-American male students who have been uh, disciplined or suspended has gone down by 29%. And this chart shows that at the secondary level, uh, over the last four years, uh, there's been about a 40% reduction in the number of suspensions. Again, more work to be done, but a lot of good work uh, is underway. Oh, skipped one. And uh, one of the things that we look at is it's not just us saying that we're doing good work. Uh, the state of Washington recognizes each year uh, schools in two categories. Uh, one is achievement award winners and the other one is schools of distinction. So out of our 103 schools, 
uh, actually last year it was 99, uh, 23 were recognized with achievement awards and 11 were recognized as schools of distinction. Goal two is improving systems district-wide in support of our schools. This year, uh, we opened five new schools and reopened two schools, we created 2,900 new seats. And we didn't grow that by that many students this year. So for the first year, maybe uh, in a long while, uh, we caught up uh, and we were able to provide more new seats uh, than we had student growth. We still have a long way to go, uh, but we're making progress both on uh, opening schools for our new students and providing updated schools for uh, our students across the district. As many of you know, uh, Seattle was one of the largest districts uh, in the nation to move to later start times for our high school students, one of the goals from the school board. And uh, then the city of Seattle provided the funding to go to two-tier busing. All of that's good news and uh, a support for our parents. Uh, the fine print up there says that means that we had to do 1,500 uh, bus routes all over again, and we ran 3,000 uh, practice runs over the summer to try to be uh, as on time and accurate as we could when school started. One of the things that we do each year is we ask principals how we're doing in supporting them, and uh, actually Charles Wright, our former deputy, is in the house somewhere. He started this uh, undertaking to find out from principals about uh, how are we doing at meeting your needs. And we've seen a, a strong run-up over the last three years, and this slide says that uh, there was an 11-point increase this last year from principals saying district systems and processes are clear and well managed by the central office. Again, more work to be done, but headed in the right direction. <clears throat> Goal three is strengthening our school family and community engagement. Families are our children's first teacher, and we uh, welcome the opportunities to partner with Seattle Council PTSA and our parents throughout the district. One of the focal points for the school board uh, has been uh, improving our community engagement. Uh, Director Harris, together with uh, Carrie Campbell from our communications office, have worked together on a task force this last year to identify what does it look like to truly engage uh, with our community and with our parents, and uh, how do we provide uh, that training. This uh, survey that we did with parents about the time that school was out last year says uh, there was a 14% increase in the number of parents who said that the district reaches out to parents when important decisions need to be made. Once again, more to be done, but moving in the right direction. Increased access is one of the areas that uh, we have worked on, uh, and uh, we've increased our language access. I think the school board has approved about three or $400,000 in additional funding over the last two years to provide for uh, more translations in our five top languages. Our websites, uh, thanks to improvement in Google Translate, uh, is now available in, I believe, nine languages, and uh, we have the most ADA accessible uh, online uh, access of any district school district in the nation. We've doubled, uh, thanks to city support, the amount of preschool students that we serve. Uh, the school district has served uh, through Head Start and ECAP, our preschool students, for a number of years. Uh, and with the city levy, uh, that number has doubled and will continue to go up, uh, bringing more of our kindergarten students to us prepared for uh, that first year in Seattle Public Schools. And uh, this slide, uh, I don't know, we've, I, I needed a better map for this. Uh, this uh, I, the words fail me on this one. I mean, this is truly better together. We started uh, last year's budget about this time of the year with a $74 million deficit for this year. The biggest deficit that we've faced in 40 years. Uh, and we work together with the school board, we work together with SEA and with our principals and with the Seattle Council PTSA to figure out how can we absorb uh, this kind of a reduction and still uh, offer quality educational services to our students. At about that time, uh, we came together with our legislative uh, delegation and we went to Olympia talking about our levy cliff. 
uh, and the funding that was being uh, removed uh, from the school district. And as a result of that, we got $24 million back in the middle of uh, kind of that budget year, and that meant that 200 teachers that were scheduled for uh, being reassigned, uh, we didn't have to do that. And then as the legislature ended their session, there was an another $11 million in added funding that came to us. So truly we are better together. That's not something that any of us could have done alone, but together uh, we made a huge impact and meant that we have, uh, we still had a lot of belt tightening to do for this year, but uh, we're up and operating and doing good things uh, for our students. So looking forward, a uh, brief look at what lies ahead. Uh, we'll continue to uh, work on our uh, three goals, uh, excellence, equity, and engagement. Uh, we have high school changes ahead. Uh, we've continued to work at and look at with our principals and with our teachers and through uh, some community engagement. What does high school look like if we move beyond the six period day? Uh, and so we'll uh, begin to do that next year and make a, fully, uh, a full step uh, in that direction uh, the following year. As many of you know, we're also underway in terms of looking at what boundaries might look like for high schools as we reopen Lincoln High School in 2019. Full funding uh, still uh, remains elusive to us. Uh, I guess our fear is that many uh, might think that McCleary has been satisfied or solved uh, we beg to differ. Uh, the legislature, although they have uh, stepped in the right direction, is still far from what they promised in 2009 and 2010 and what the Supreme Court said would be adequate to satisfy McCleary. So we await the Supreme Court decision. What we know right now is that the added funding from the legislature is a little bit better than we feared for this next year or two. But in the long run, we know we'll get less money and our taxes uh, will be higher. So there's still work for us to do together uh, in sharing that message with our legislators. We also uh, look forward to, uh, over the summer, doing our uh, collective bargaining with SEA. And uh, coming up about a year from now, the city will have uh, on the ballot uh, their uh, family and education levy, and then shortly thereafter, uh, the district uh, will have our kind of, it's not exactly annual, but we'll have our regular update for our operations levy and uh, a heavy lift for our construction funds uh, to build and remodel and restore uh, our older schools. <clears throat> I was delighted uh, to have the opportunity to join uh, Seattle schools uh, three plus years ago when uh, asked to come and uh, be interim superintendent. Uh, and one of the reasons for that, well, several reasons, A, the city where I was born and the opportunity to come back and be of uh, service to a city that I love. Uh, but uh, more essentially, uh, the commitment that the board uh, had made through the strategic plan and continues to make in eliminating opportunity gaps. Truly, this is the issue of our time, I believe, for Seattle, as well as for every other district in America. More than half of our students are students of color, uh, and historically, public schools have not served our students of color as well as uh, they deserve, and uh, what we need both as a moral imperative for each and every one of our students, as well as uh, an economic imperative for the well-being of our city and our community and our nation. A few highlights in terms of uh, work that has been done. So we still have a lot of work to do in eliminating opportunity gaps, but we have more schools each year that are pointing the way. Rainier View and Olympic Hills are ranked in the top 1% of urban schools in America by the Council of Great City Schools in terms of uh, closing gaps uh, for uh, students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. Those are two of the schools that we've been uh, digging into and trying to learn from uh, so that as the school board has asked that we can replicate that uh, information across the district. Three of our uh, middle schools, Mercer, Denny, and Aki Karosi lead the state 
in uh, math scores for eighth grade students. Uh, and uh, they've been at the forefront. And I guess, well, we don't have, we, we need better together up here on this one too. Uh, so this truly is, uh, again, a better together story. Uh, great work by our educators, uh, great work with the city uh, family and education levy, and great work by the Nash Home Family Foundation. So uh, a number of years ago, we had one uh, school that outperformed uh, statewide in terms of closing gaps, and that was Mercer. And then we had three, the three schools that are up here. And then we went to eight, and now we're more than a dozen of our schools are leading the state in closing opportunity gaps. A year ago, these three middle schools uh, occupied the top four positions in the state of Washington. They now occupy the top three positions in the state of Washington. Each of these schools has a significant number of African-American students, and they have the highest performance for African-American students statewide. More work to be done, but they're leading the way, and we're learning from them. <clears throat> So what have we found out that makes a difference? Uh, being educators, we start looking at the academics, and we know that the academics matter. If we're clear on what the learning targets are, if we have teams of teachers that are working together to plan those lessons, if we have assessments that tell us how students are doing on a regular basis, and we use that data to know each student by story, strength, and need, we know that we can do a better job of closing gaps for each and every one of our students. And this is, I believe, why we outperform our peers nationally and uh, statewide. However, uh, as we know from uh, many of you, our parents, as well as uh, community leaders, as well as uh, our student voices, as we heard from LaShaughnessy, we know that relationships matter, and they matter a lot. One question, I ha do you have an adult at school who cares about you, explains 25% of the growth for our African American students that are progressing and on track to graduate. As a result of that, uh, SEA and PASS, our principals association, came together with district leaders to say, how do we do uh, better in this category across the district? So for the last two years, uh, we have, uh, done district-wide professional development, hard to do with 4,000 educators scattered over 100 or more locations. Uh, and we've done that through very creative ways of getting facilitators in each building and working together in partnership, including student voice, as we heard here earlier, uh, to talk about what else can we do to make sure that we uh, are providing that uh, positive, caring adult voice at school for each and every one of our students, particularly the ones that uh, we have not served historically as well as we could. Story strength and need is huge. Uh, as I visited one school uh, a few weeks ago, uh, the principal was walking me down the hall and he introduced me to a young uh, African-American gentleman, introduced me to him by name as Kenneth. Uh, and told me that he uh, knew everything there was to know about small animals and proceeded to give me a few examples of uh, things that he had learned. And you could just watch the young man's face uh, brighten up uh, and become energized and uh, enthused. That's the goal that we have for each and every one of our students, and uh, we want to do our part. Uh, we now have uh, about half of our schools are checking in with students on a, a quarterly basis to find out how they're doing at listening to student voice and building those uh, relationships. One example uh, from that group of uh, three middle schools, Aki Karosi, um, is a great example of how we are better together. So in addition to the uh, other partners that I mentioned earlier, uh, the Aki Karosi agreed to pilot uh, President Obama's uh, program, My Brother's Keeper, a little bit more than uh, a year ago. Maybe it's closer to two years ago now. What that does, uh, let's see. What that does is that means that uh, they've identified students that need that extra support and they've identified uh, a, a positive growth mentor that looks like those students and uh, gives them 
daily opportunities to engage and hear from an adult that they know positively, uh, knows them well, and cares about them. And as a result of that program, which the city has now funded for half of our middle schools, so this would be another area where we'd love to have those arrows touch, if we could find a few more community partners to come together with us to make this program available in all of our middle schools, uh, that would be awesome. 95% of those students uh, met their attendance targets, and these were students that had been chronically absent prior to that time. And 66% of the students met their uh, uh, proficiency standards on the state test, uh, many of them for the first time. So a great example of how we are uh, better together and how important the relationships are to go with uh, the academics. One of the other things that Aki Krosi does is we, as I had a chance to visit that school recently is that uh, there is an app for this. Uh, they have a little app on their phone that identifies uh, what are we doing in the classroom to engage students and do the things that students tell us, student voice, matter most to them in being a good student and being able to perform well in school. So we visit the classroom, we punch our little buttons in our phone, we step into the hallway, hit send, and we have a little graph right there saying this is what we saw collectively uh, in the classroom, and then we can talk about examples that we want to share, that they want to share with other teachers. As they started that process, uh, teachers were understandably a little bit reluctant to do that, uh, and now teachers do it themselves, and they want to know uh, first, what did you find out? What did my students say? What did you see? And now the teachers are asking students themselves. What are the things that I'm doing that are helping you learn? And what are the things that I can do that will help you more? So uh, as we meet with our uh, leadership team, our principals and assistant principals, I have the opportunity to meet with them each month. They've committed uh, one day a month to their professional development and coming together uh, to learn about equity and what we can do to close opportunity gaps. And uh, my challenge to them and to me is, uh, can we listen to voices like LaShaughnessy? Can we listen to principals? Can we listen to parents? Can we learn from that? Can we learn from our schools that are leading the way? And then can we lead? So we're at an interesting time in education. Uh, one of my quotes, favorite quotes is from Eric Hoffer, and it says, in times of change, the learners inherit the world, and the learned find themselves perfectly prepared for a world that no longer exists. So that's our challenge, is that educators are just great. We've got credentials upon credentials upon credentials, and the state wants that, and you want that, and you want us to be highly qualified. And at the same time, we're now in an era where uh, what we did before is not good enough. Uh, we, again, are not serving all of our students. We are not closing all of our opportunity gaps for each and every one of our students. And that means that we're all in that era of being learners. How do we learn from each other? How do we support each other? How do we work together? Uh, and how do we lead so that we can be truly better together? So as I end, I want to thank uh, SEA. I want to thank PASS uh, for partnering with us on figuring out how to learn from our schools that are leading the way, uh, a dozen, two dozen schools that are closing gaps better than anyone in the state. I want to thank our school board for keeping the focus on those four years uh, for the, our three top goals, putting money behind it and giving us time to line up those arrows from um, internally uh, and externally. I want to thank the city uh, for partnering with us. They've put another $10 million into helping us uh, eliminate the opportunity gap just in the last year in addition to the family and education uh, levy. And our Seattle Council PTSA uh, and each of our uh, PTSA groups across the district have worked with us on helping resolve our funding crisis and work with us shoulder to shoulder in classrooms. Truly we are better together and um, Part of uh, my shift in thinking 
listening to LaShaughnessy and others, is this is more than eliminating opportunity gaps. This is about ensuring opportunities for greatness. I can still make it go EOG. Ensuring opportunities for greatness for each and every one of our 54,000 students. So with that, uh, we're going to hear a few more of our student voices, uh, and uh, we'll continue to think together about what can you do, what can I do, what can we do together to make a difference for each and every one of our students. It will keep going just as you will. You have a talent for melting like wax and wandering for a form to take. I really identify with poetry. Hard palms are becoming soft and strong enough to hold things again. It's really making language a tool of resistance for me, a tool of healing. You reconstruct yourself with patience. Anyone, including myself, has the right to have an audience and to have their voice elevated and listened to. There are people who are not only willing, but who welcome my words and welcome what I have to say. I've struggled, I think, throughout my life with seeing my identity and my history reflected in classes. And that's what really discourages, especially students of color, who like come from like non-privileged backgrounds. It's really hard for me because I had a really strong accent. And all the kids would make fun of me. I get picked on by, you know, just because, you know, I'm black. I felt like there was something wrong with me or that I was dumb. The way that I learn and the way that my teachers try to teach me are two very different things. You actively look for help and you find out there's not really a solution. I'm in the mindset that when I go to school, people don't care. They just don't care where the district needs to improve as a whole is trusting that students have the answers to what we need. What we need is stronger communication between the bottom of the system and the top of the system. Building that connection between the teacher and the student that is more caring. Just really think in your head, do my students understand what I just taught them? Honestly, all I want is the teachers to be the same towards everybody. It would have helped to feel like what I said or what um, I was going through meant something. I'm hopeful that students will have an infinitely better school experience when their teachers and staff know their faces. On bad days, deadlines take the backs. I actually got into poetry because one of my counselors kept trying to convince me to take this poetry class. She went so out of her way to push me to do this. I felt really special and I felt cared for. Seattle Public Schools is now like really like becoming really responsive nothing else like that like makes students feel at home together we can do we can do anything as long as we set our mind to it together we can accomplish anything together we can make a change and a difference in the school system and each kid together we can change. Together we can communicate and make change. I can use my words to help people learn and connect with. Together we can build a new culture in schools that really uplifts everyone. You all still leaning in? Show me. All right, all right. Okay, so better together, knowing each student by their story, strength, and need. Centering our work on what students need from us. These are some things that I heard. I heard caring teachers, learning that reflects their culture, clear communication, relationships, and audience. Ensuring excellence for every student, we cannot do this alone. 
We have a long-standing relationship with the City of Seattle and many partners who help us in this work. I would now like to introduce Ron Sims to the stage. Mr. Ron Sims served for 12 years as the elected executive of our own Martin Luther King Jr. County. Before becoming county executive, he was an elected member of county council. He is the former co-chair of the Seattle, uh, City of Seattle Education Summit and was announced a few days ago as the, um, a member of the mayor-elect Jenny Durkin's transition team. Let's welcome Mr. Sims and sharing our energy with them and leaning in. All right. It is great being here today, and it was uh, wonderful listening to the students' voices, and there's more to come. The, uh, and I uh, just can't thank the city of Seattle enough for its work to form really viable and strong partnerships with the school district. They don't tell you what to do. They lay out the things that the Seattle can do as a government and the things that they wish to partner with the school district. I want to talk about schools, though, because I've been sitting here thinking, what should I really tell you? So. This, one of the things I really enjoy about retirement, which is absolutely something I really love doing. I mean, people say, don't you want to be in politics? Oh, no, 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 I want to be free. I free at last, free from newspapers, free from comments, and the ability to go into restaurants and Costco and wherever and, and have somebody not say I'm your boss and may have to listen to them for 15 minutes. The, um, but what my, why do I love schools and public school in particular? And why do I think it's so important to American democracy? So when I retired, my uh, wife had decided that there's things that she wanted to do that I would be told to do with her, not asked. It wasn't an advisory opinion. So one of them was that she wanted to do the Camino walk. And I said, what is the Camino walk? She says, well, it's a, it's a long walk. It's in Spain. You'll have a good time. We'll go to Barcelona first, which we did. Then, you know, we'll go to Madrid, and that'll be fun, which we did. And then she says, then we're going to go to Syria. Because she didn't want to take the 35-day walk. She wanted to take the six-day walk. So I said, oh, I can walk six days. She says, yeah, it's about 14 miles a day. Oh, so on this walk, what do you do for 14 miles each day? I got rid of a lot of things I was carrying, a lot of personal things that I was carrying. Had no idea that I was still pained by those things, and I needed to set them aside because life was too good and too sweet for me to carry them any longer. So I spent six days discharging hurts little small things that, for whatever reason, when I was younger, pained me, and I never forgot. And so I was talking to my wife about the things I left in Spain, the things that I freed myself from in Spain, the things I discharged on that very long trail with a lot of other people in Spain. It wasn't a pilgrimage. It was unleashing things that needed to be let go a long time ago. She said, what were they? I said, my teachers. I said, you know, one of the things that I had done after my parents passed away is I began to organize all of their records, all of them. And I got to see my report cards. Now, I thought I was a perfect student. I knew I was a perfect student, but the depth of the anger directed at me by my teachers in writing to my parents stunned me. I had never, ever felt so demeaned as an individual. And to this day, I can't figure out how I overcame it. And so I decided to leave it there because what they felt didn't define me. 
It didn't stop me. It didn't take away my aspirations because I was fortunate enough to meet some really good teachers. Spokane Hutchinson was my favorite. She was great. She taught poetry. Now you probably say, why would Ron go to a poetry class? I have no idea why I went to a poetry class. I was told that Spokane Hutchinson was cool. That's all we knew. And so we all went to her class and she was kind of for, you know, in the 60s, she was a cool, cool teacher. And she asked me to write a poem, which I did, and she loved it so much, she took it to the, um, and she was gonna have it published in our school's literary magazine. And she came back and apologized to me for the conduct of the other teachers for taking what she called one of the most beautiful poems she ever read and saying it was not good enough to be published. And then she said, but you, I don't want you ever, ever to stop believing in yourself. I don't ever want you, I don't ever want to see you retreat from who you are. I want you to have a person of opinion. I want you to be a person of excellence. And I want you to drive and drive and drive and drive. And I watched her cry. And I said, whoa, she's the teacher's crying over the fact that my poem didn't get in a magazine. Years later, I understood what that did to me. Because when I got to college, all I can remember is Spokane Hutchinson. I can remember Carlos Flores and Orlando T. Fletcher, who wrote my recommendations to go to Central Washington and told me not to tell anybody that they had done that. Tell no one. And I said, what everybody else is bragging about being accepted to college, do not tell anyone. So I went through my senior year, and on my very last day, I said, I'm going to Central. And people, whoa, he got into college? So I looked and realized that there was a dynamic of teachers that did not see anything in me. So when I was back in Washington, D.C., there was an event we were asked to at the, go to the White House. And we went to the White House. And it was, you know, it was really great because Quincy Jones was being honored. So I was sitting next to him. He said, you know something? When I lived right across from Garfield High School, and my only dream was that people would hear my music. And I said, whoa, a lot of people have heard your music. And then he said, and Richard's dream is all he wanted to be was a lawyer. And I smiled and said, and now he is a federal district court judge. You see, people dream. And that's what I love about teachers making the right decision. Because the teachers I had were teachers of the past. I was an African American with no expectation. Even though my father graduated from Lincoln University, his roommate was Langston Hughes. Because Ivy League schools did not let black males in them. So my father was the one saying, read and write and read and write. And I was going, oh, that's, you know, hey, I'm, I'm cool. You know, I'll just take a ride here and realizing I was not my father's equal, nor will I ever be. But he never, what stayed with me was that there was a relationship between what I could accomplish in life and being educated. Being educated. So I smile now about Spokane Hutchinson and Carlos Flores and Orlando T. Fletcher. For Ron Sims's opportunities were created by them. Teachers who believed in me. Teachers who supported me. Teachers who dreamed for me. I made my parents proud because I had three incredible teachers. Three incredible teachers. So when I look at education today, I keep thinking there's a lot of Ronnie Simpsons walking around. You know, and we may not look like we have potential, but we have dreams. We may not act like we have potential, but we have dreams. We may talk back to you out of anger and frustration, but we still have dreams. And the issue is, can you absorb that shock and see the dream in me and belief in me? So I was really glad when Seattle made a decision that there are a lot of Ronnie Simses and they needed to form a financial partnership with the school district and fund it so that people would have options 
and more tools. A fundamental belief in the beauty of public education that everybody can be extraordinary if given the opportunity. So I want to thank every one of you, every single one of you, for every day doing the toughest job on this planet. You have Ronnie Simses, and we're hard-headed, and we talk back to you, and we look indifferent, but we dream. God, we dream. And thank you for believing in us and providing that opportunity and banging down those doors and telling us that we had to work hard and drive hard, and if we did it, we would be rewarded in life. My mother cried when I told her, Mom, I am going to be, I was asked by the first African-American president in U.S. history to work for him. She cried. Educators brought me from one place and gave me the determination because they took the time to believe in me. So it wasn't my dream, because I know when he said to me, do you want to work for me? I said, has anybody told you no? He says, I don't know. Has anybody told me no? <laughs> no, it was my parents who stood there for years, who rocked me and hugged me and loved me. And it was three teachers who made the difference. So in all of your lives, there's going to be a Quincy Jones who wanted somebody just to play music. There's going to be a Richard Jones who just wanted to be a lawyer and will sit on the federal bench. And there'll be a little Ronnie Sims. And I want to thank all of you for every day endeavoring to believe in us and people like me. Peace be with you, and thank you for everything you do. Dreaming, dreaming, dreams. So, sorry, excuse me. Throughout this evening, you've heard students talk about identity safety, seeing themselves in their schools, the curriculum that they experience, seeing themselves in the eyes of their teachers, being able to bring their whole selves to class. Just think about that. What if every single student was able to bring their whole self to class, not bits and pieces, but their whole self? A desire to be heard and valued. We've invited Boo Balkan Foster and Juan Betancourt to share what this looks like in the classroom and what this means for students. Good evening. Um, thank you for the invitation to be here tonight. Um, I am humbled to share with you a little bit about what I do because um, I love my job, because I love my students. Um, earlier, we were asked to say what we love about Seattle Public Schools, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. But first, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Boo Balkan Foster. I'm a descendant of the Hickory Apache people, and I'm also adopted Macaw into the Turk Markishtum family. Um, the reason I love Seattle Public Schools is because I am fired up about our Native Education Department. I've worked in Seattle Public Schools for over two decades. I've seen a lot of things come and go. I've seen a lot of things happen, and I am so excited about what's happening in Native Ed. Um, what we're doing is innovative and groundbreaking because under the leadership of my supervisor, we never lose our focus, our laser focus on students. Um, I am the Shikachi teacher. In the second, sem the second semester of 2016, through the leadership of Gail Morris and Dr. Nyland, um, a leadership class was started that was placed at Chief Seattle that serves the students of both Chief Seattle and Danny International. This is a new thing. It had never been done before. In fact, it didn't even have a name. But working in partnership with the treaty holders of this territory, the Muckleshoot Indian Tribe, they gifted us a name, many names, actually. And then my boss prayed on it, thought about it, 
consulted her elders, and she chose shikachi. Shikachi means to raise hands. We raise our hands to say hello. We raise our hands to say good morning. It essentially means I hold you in the highest of esteem. So I'd never, this job had never been done before, and I thought, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And then Shikachi came, and it's proven to be the most incredible teacher for me because everything I do, I raise my hands to lift up my students. That takes a lot of forms. I have two objectives in Shikachi. Number one is identity safety. Recently, somebody asked me what identity safety meant. It's a hard thing to break down. For me, what identity safety means is I get to remind, I get the privilege and the honor to remind my students of who they are. I get paid to remind kids every day where they come from. And all the other messages that we've all been given, and I heard Mr. Sims share what the messages he got from educators. We get to wipe that away, and I get the privilege of reminding them, get rid of the noise. I see you. And I get to remind them of who they are. I'm pretty lucky. I could talk for hours about my students and share their stories, but I don't have their permission, and you guys might get tired of me. So um, because I'm called to be a part of student stories and push them to lead, I just brought one of my students with me. Um, I'd like to introduce you to um, Juan Betancourt, um, Old Chief, and he will say who he is, and he will talk, because if I'm going to talk about what I do in my classroom, I'm not doing a very good job unless I'm lifting up my students to do it for me. Identity safety for me and partnering just means I'm honored to be part of stories. So please welcome one. Hello, everyone. Um, as you heard from Boo, Ms. Boo, uh, my name is Juan Betancourt, Old Chief. Um, I'm, my tribes that I come from are Squamish, Yakima, and Blackfeet. Uh, those are my three main tribes, and the outfit that I have on comes from my Blackfeet side. And uh, I'm accepted into the Chicken Dance Society. Uh, not many people are, but it uh, represents who our tribe is. It's, um, it's carried highly with pride, and uh, as you'll see when I dance. And um, I just really want to thank all you guys, uh, thank the Seattle Public Schools for the class that we have, uh, Shikachi. I came here and I've never, uh, I've never felt a school so welcoming when I walked into that class. Um, I walked in there and it just felt like home. Um, it was right away. They introduced ourselves. You know, every morning we introduce ourselves, our names, our tribes, where we come from, and um, it, it stays with you. It shows who you are, and I really want to thank uh, Seattle Public Schools for that. And um, it just it helps all students recognize and remember where we come from. We come from uh, native people who are still here, still going strong, uh, even through all the events and bumps that we went through, and we're still here standing strong. And um, the song that I'm going to dance to is uh, Power to the People, and that's what it shows. And I just want to thank all you guys once again. Thank you.
I just, I just want to say that um, all over the district in classrooms and in schools, um, teachers in schools are recognizing November as Native American Month. We don't do that in my classroom because we do it every day. Thank you. Wow, thank you. First of all, thank you, Gail Morris. This is Gail, we spoke about Gail before. Wave your hand, Gail, if you don't know who Gail Morris is. She's our director of our Native Education Program. And did you see what Juan did at the end? Did you see that little shake? Uh-huh, I got the memo, Juan. All right, so um, to ensure excellence in education for every student, it will take our best selves, our best ideas. It will require to us to think and work differently to honor the stories of our families, our students, our educators, to build strengths and student voice. When you came in, you may have shared what you love about Seattle Public Schools. Now I want you to share what is one thing you can personally do to make education for our students better for all of our students. It might be mentoring a student, even if you don't have a child of your own, making connection. For us in central office, it might be visiting schools more often and making personal connections with our students there. Before we end with our last student performance, on the count of three, I want you to say that commitment and that idea into the space, okay? Shout it out, but we're gonna practice first before you shout, okay, you ready? All right, so we're gonna practice with a whisper, all right? You ready? One, two, three, whisper. You got it? You got your word? Okay, so now we're gonna do it again. You ready to shout? All right, everyone stand up. Get your energy together, lean in, shake. All right, you got it? Oh, you guys, that was a weak shake. Do that again, come on. All right, all right, all right. Now shout it out. Collaborate. <laughs> oh, I had the microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> See, that was a practice. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Collaborate. <laughs> All right, go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> All right, these are our collective commitments to working together, working better on behalf of students. In closing, we're going to leave you with this gift. The Ingram High School combined concert, vocal jazz, and treble choirs. They will be singing a Nigerian song called Ose, Oshe Ayo. It means sunrise song. You will be asked to participate in this song and the words in your program, so I want you all to sing loud and clear, okay? All right, thank you.